morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. So um, we have a lot of questions already. And you know, anything that we say is not meant to diagnose anyone. It's meant for um, information to do your own research, OK? So no here cures here. No nope. cures, no, no, no diagnosing. All right, so guess who we're going to go to first? We're going to go to Ruth from <gasps> Dallas, Texas. Hey, Ruth. Hey, I just can't get enough. I have to keep calling in. That's totally fine. Uh, my mommy says that I am cold during the day because I have low iron. And I've always had low iron, but now I'm through menopause and it still seems to be low because I had my blood tested recently and it tested 68 out of a range of 45 to 160. Oh, um, wow. But I eat a lot of red meat and normally it's medium to rare. So how can I get my body to utilize the iron better? That's question number one. And okay. Question number two is even easier. My 19-year-old son gets mid-back pain occasionally, but when I massage his around his belly button, it goes away. Mm -hmm. What could be the underlying cause of the mid-back pain? Okay, good questions. Okay, so the, the, the best way um, to handle anemia is to... Um, Either take a grass-fed um, liver um, extract, you can take that in a supplement, or better yet, grass-fed spleen. There's nothing like some good spleen, you know, I mean, you can get them in supplements. And uh, that, that really will support um, low iron for sure, and it gives you a lot of other factors as well. Um, Karen, what does the spleen do? Oh, you know, <coughs> I think that that's a very good quiz question, and I think everyone should answer that right now. Yeah, don't look at me, Karen. I got no idea. I'm not looking at you because okay, I so know it's like. <laughs> all right, good. So that'll be our first question. Um, so, Ruth, um, there's two things. One is that um, either it's not coming from the diet, which um, you know that could be an issue, um, maybe not, or you need to increase the pH of your stomach to absorb iron because if you have low stomach acid, and um, which would mean that you have indigestion, things like that, then that would solve the absorption of iron. So um, as we age and get past 50 and then 60, we lose our stomach acid. So one really good remedy would be betaine hydrochloride. Betaine hydrochloride with a B, not patain, betaine hydrochloride. Uh, and sometimes you need like, like five of them. You just take them before each meal. and. It takes a while to reestablish the stomach acids, but uh, that will increase your absorption of um, iron. But I think the spleen would be the icing on the cake on that one. Um, okay, next question, pressing on the belly button or your belly area, why does it re reduce back pain? Because a lot of the back pain that people have is being referred by some organ congestion somewhere, either underneath the rib cage or it could be anywhere. I mean, I can't tell you how many times in practice that you have people come in with back pain and you adjust them and you treat them for months and you don't see any change. It just keeps coming back because the problem is more internal. I would look at what your son's consuming and um, work on that and do some of the uh, kind of like the, the manual kind of therapy that I talk about. There's a video on that. If you look under uh, liver flushing video, that's a really good one. You can actually apply that and that, that will really help. So. Thanks for your question, Ruth. I'll be, we'll be talking to you next week. All right. What do we have as an answer here? Okay. So um, different ways of stating that it's a blood cleaner. Mm. Uh, pulls infection from the blood, breaks down nutrients, mm. uh, filters blood, balances fluids in the body. Okay. Well, it, uh, the kidney is a filter. This primarily, okay. a spleen is a, um, a recycler of the red blood cells. So it'll take the damaged ones and take them out of the system and uh, kind of recycle them. So it'll, it's like a junkyard. It'll just kind of take these old parts. Um, it's very efficient. It's, it, it's a very large lymph node. And it's a site where you can have um, contain infections so the immune system can contain certain microbes. Um, there's a lot of other functions, but all you need to know right now, it, it helps to recycle the red blood cells. Okay? There you go. All right, good. So you have a question. I do. I have a question from YouTube. 
uh, are ketones hard on the liver? And could you ever be in a situation where a ketone kills you? Now, what's interesting about ketones, especially with your liver, your liver um, doesn't use ketones for energy. Now, um, just like your brain doesn't use uh, fatty acids for energy, because you have all these fatty acids in the brain, you're not going to necessarily use it, its own fuel. You'll break down the own fuel. The same thing with the, the liver. The liver makes all the ketones, so you're not going to necessarily feed it. So um, I guess the best way to answer that question would be to say that um, unless you are a type 1 diabetic and you're failing to take your insulin, um, you have nothing to worry about. The ketones are going to be very healthy for the liver. It's where you have what's called um, ketoacidosis, where you have this um, like massive amount of ketone production because um, you're di type 1 diabetic and you didn't take your insulin. So now the acid can actually really mess you up big time. Um, but if that's not the situation, you have nothing to worry about because your body has a uh, mechanism that if you actually have too many ketones, it will slow down the production of ketones. It won't go out of control. So your body can actually control that. Mm. Um, I was just studying about that recently, Karen. I believe Because I was wondering yeah. where, when, when I would have to answer that, and here we go. Um, but no, it's the, the ketones are, first of all, they're extremely healthy for every, every tissue in the body. And your body, you know, it's like, were we designed to live on ketones? Um, well, I think so, because we have a lot of extra fat to use as fuel. And also, if we were not designed to live on ketones, then why do we only store about 1,700, 1700 calories of glucose as glycogen? We would run out and die. Mm. We have to store fat. And an average person stores about a, 100,000 calories of fat on their body. Every, I mean, that's, a, that's not even a fat person. So we have a lot of extra fuel to run on, which will give us about an extra, s if you're not overweight, you have about 60, 66 days to survive off your fat. Wow. Okay, so you're, you're good. I got you're good like, to go. probably like a few months. <laughs> well, that is a few 66 months. 66 days, yeah. <laughs> I got a little more than that, but okay, good. Well, that makes a lot of sense. That's right, Karen. Okay, uh, now I have another question. Go ahead. And this is, not from FB or YT. Okay. It's from KB. Okay. So how does vitamin B, because, you know, we say, okay, well, we need B vitamins uh, for our, men, you know, mental clarity and mm -hmm. uh, things like that. How does a vitamin B assist in digestion? Well, there's, a, there's, um, there's all these different chemical pathways that occur um, uh, in different ways, especially even breaking down food. Um, even making energy at the very basic cellular level in the mitochondria. So you have all these little, um, like little tiny machines that are working to do thir the work in the body, to make the enzymes work. And uh, B vitamins are a real key cofactor or a helper in making those pathways work, those machines work. And what about B with relation to uh, betaine hydrochloride? Or Betaine hydrochloride is not a B vitamin, it's a different thing. No, but is, does B aid in the production of something that you need for digestion? Absolutely. Yeah, and it's, it's needed to even make hydrochloric acid. Okay, hydrochloric acid, that must have been what I was thinking. Okay. Okay, yeah. just check. Yeah, you also need potassium, zinc, and chloride, which comes from sea salt. Mm -hmm. um, okay, good. Real quick question for everyone, the first quiz of the day. Um, what is the only organ that makes bile? It's only one. This is, do, is this an easy one? This is the throw us a bone question today? This is the question. That's all I'm going to say. Oh. And as you are answering the question, we're going to go to Rose from New York City. Are you there? Yes. Hi. Hi, hi Dr. Berg. Hi, Karen. Hi, hi. Rose. Um, I'd like Hi, I'd like to thank you guys for posting all these videos on YouTube because um, it re it helped me find the reason for uh, my recent headaches. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so I'm like in my 40s and um, like I've noticed like before my period, um, I've been having these throbbing headaches. And that, so this is the second, this is the second month 
and then um, a couple of days ago, like I tried without anything, mm-hmm. get taking anything, and it lasted for like two days before like let me just search for a video and see what's going on. So it is hormone related, mm. and um, I had celery in my refrigerator, <laughs> so I munched on it and mm-hmm. it alleviated it. Um, I wasn't sure if it was because of my recent fasting schedule that was also the cause because right now I'm doing OMAD pretty much every day except like Tuesday, Thursday when I don't, you know, I choose not to eat. So I do prolonged fasting on those two days. Mm -hmm. Um, So is there, is that part of the reason why I've been getting these new headaches or, and um, like, is there a way for me to anticipate and like totally avoid them because I rarely have headaches that's why I was like this can't be happening so I have a question so you started getting headaches when you started doing one meal a day or keto uh, no um, I was wondering if that was like one of the reasons why like maybe there's like a it you know it um, affected you know my hormones or something because this is the second time I've had the headaches during my period and I've been doing my new fasting schedule the, these past three months. Yeah. And that's the only change that I've done. Okay. There's a couple reasons for that. I would, uh, first of all, when you do a change, with, especially with OMAD, you're going to one meal a day, um, realize that you are, uh, you're relying on ketones for your fuel and less uh, sugar from, diet, from the diet. So your body has to make the sugar that it needs for the certain parts of the brain. Um, but in the transition, um, you may find that um, you're not fully adapted in which case, especially in the transitional phase, you could have a headache and feel kind of funky. So one way to figure that out is just to take some MCT oil from coconuts. If that handles your headache, then we know it's just a transitional problem. But because they're related to your cycle, um, I, would, um, I would take some sea kelp or iodine because when you do keto and eat once, once a, a day, um, the, the big deficiency that shows up is trace minerals because you're only, a lot of people are, not, are deficient going into a, a fasting cycle. So if you take sea kelp and took, take all the trace minerals, including iodine, which will help buffer your estrogen and help you with that, that may just knock out the headaches right there. And then if that didn't work, then we know it's, it could be related to the gallbladder. Gallbladder congestion or inability to digest more fat, especially on a keto will refer pain to the headache, especially on the right side. So there's a lot of headache issues that are related to gallbladder. I have videos on that. All right, Rose, thanks for your question. Oh, I think we're ready for the answer, Karen. What do we have as the answer? What is the only organ that makes bile? Well, my favorite answer was liver, duh. And that, the answer is correct. It's your liver. liver. It was an easy question. Uh, you know, some people said gallbladder. Because the, the gallbladder <laughs> stores, stores the, the bile. Now, right. why would you need to store, what's the significance of the bile being stored? Do you, are you asking me that question or is that another Yeah, I'm just kind of just seeing. If I know anything? No, just to see <laughs> if you, what your guess would be. <laughs> Well, my guess would be that it's good to have a little bile handy because what if I'm going to eat something and I haven't, and I, it's something fatty. Thank you. And maybe I'm going to have a big slab of fat. Thank you. And, and I have some stored up. Right, Good. Steve? That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. I like that sort of condescending comeback, Karen. That was good. <laughs> I mean, like, duh, right? <laughs> no, someone actually said that. Well, <laughs> the, um, the thing with the gallbladder, and the reason I'm bringing up this up is because... Um, just some people need to be have a clarification of that. Sure. There's a concentration effect on the gallbladder. Why is that significant? Um, why is Alex it important to concentrate just your... just said that. Alex said to concentrate it. Yes, he's correct. The significance of concentrating is that by 20 times is that you can use less of it and it can actually go into the small intestine and help break down uh, the fat. Out of just the fat that you're eating and extract the fat soluble vitamins. But here's the thing, when you have your gallbladder removed, Steve, um, now you have this less concentrated bile that's always coming out, always coming out. And um, I'm gonna do a video today on the, the consequences of having your gallbladder out long term. There's a lot of consequences, even though the, your vision starts to blurry and you can't see because you can't get the vitamin A. 
And so I want to make people aware just of that, just, just so they can connect the dots. Because they're, if, you, if you go online, you see how many questions are like, why do I have this symptom? I have my gallbladder. Why do I have this symptom? And then you have other, the answer is, oh, no, that's normal. It's not connected. I know it occurred right after you had the gallbladder, but it's not connected. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, a lot of confusion. We talked about that last week. A little bit, didn't we? Oh, I think we're going to keep talking about it. I think it we're going to keep the, talking about it. I'm going to have to talk about my mom again. I want to, I want to, I, I definitely want to write a book about the, the gallbladder. It's just a fascinating organ. People say it's unnecessary. Uh, we don't really need it. And there's 700,000 uh, gallbladder removals every single year. That's, I oh think that's a bit too much. Now, Go what ahead. about when I've heard, you know, people have these enormous stones. I mean, is there a way to repair a gallbladder? In that case, do you have to jerk it out? Well, first of all, you need to know how to prevent the stones. And if you have stones maybe forming, maybe you can dissolve it. I mean, it's, you take bile salts. That's, that's how you dissolve it. Um, Not if that that's a treatment. Well, it is medically, but we don't, we don't uh, recommend, we don't recommend treating treatments diseases. of any kind. But you know, when you have an emergency and medical care is needed, then you absolutely need medical care. No treatment here. <laughs> okay, so let's go to Sri from Ontario. Sri. Sri. Are you there? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, I, I started keto diet. Uh, full hardcore uh, for this is eighth week and uh, <clears throat> I notice uh, I, I have a urine strip uh, that to measure ketones in the urine uh, after a, after a post workout like uh, day before yesterday I had a 26 kilometer bike ride and uh, when I came back uh, I I did the urine strip measured it and it shows uh, very less ketones uh, that's okay uh, but after an hour of rest, I start uh, measuring it and uh, it's showing like the fifth color, which is very dark pink. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it is continuously w dark for a couple of hours after that. Mm -hmm. So my question was, is it, is it momentarily triggering a ketoacidosis mm -hmm. condition or anything? That's yeah. That's one question. Yeah, good question. And um, no, it's not a ketoacidosis. Um, you would feel it if it was. Um, it's basically you, when you exercise, you use, up, you use up your blood sugars, okay? So you use up your sugar in your blood. So um, now there's no more sugar. So guess what your body's gonna make? It's gonna make ketones, so the ketones are gonna go up. Um, you could, um, like I, you, you should watch my video on ketoacidosis because I give you all the symptoms. You're gonna start noticing your breathing is off. Um, you're not gonna feel great if you have keto, I, I mean, if you feel great, you don't have ketoacidosis. And plus, it's almost impossible to have ketoacidosis if you have a healthy pancreas uh, because the insulin is going to kind of help you regulate your blood sugars. So it's, uh, when you have ketoacidosis, you have a massive spike in blood sugars. Okay, so uh, like over 300. And um, you can just check your sugars. If they're low, that means that insulin is working and everything is fine. But watch my video on that. Okay, I'm ready for another uh, question for everyone. Um, oh. And then, then we'll go to your questions. Okay, good. Okay. What is worse, yogurt or ice cream? What is more unhealthy, yogurt or ice cream? You mean which is better? No, what is worse? What tastes better? No, for your health, okay? Okay, so go ahead, Karen. Okay, good. So I have a Facebook question here, and I'm sorry I didn't get your name. Um, has muscle spasms, it feels like in the intestines, like mm -hmm. s bouts of almost like a twisting. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything that can be done to calm that down? Yeah, you just stop eating donuts and Twinkies. Um, no, but what you wanna do is you wanna, it's definitely related to what, what you're eating. There's some, something you're not eating it could be ugh, too much, too much uh, anything, carbs or anything like that. It could also be too much fat that you, you don't have the bile to digest. So I would really realize what you're eating. Now, if you want some temporary relief, what you need to do is take magnesium. But again, I'm very familiar with the spasms and the tightness in the colon. And uh, if you're on the official healthy keto version that we recommend, you should not have that. So here's a question on top of that one. 
if I eat something, how long would it be before I would feel a twisting or a spasm in the intestine like that? So if I was keeping a log, okay, I ate these things, uh, how would I know exactly what affected it? Well, the stomach, it takes like, you know, between one and three hours to get through the stomach level because it kind of goes down and back, comes back up too. Your body will um, um, digest at the stomach level and then it takes quite a bit of time to start going through the small intestine. And there's certain things that slow it down to help the enzymes to dissolve. So the, the thing is that an average person has food from the previous meal that's in the small intestine. They're putting food into the stomach. So we have like a constant, mm. we never get to a point where it's like, oh, it's empty unless we do fasting. And then you can actually put food in there. So Right, so that would be a good idea is to fast for a day or so and then log what you're eating and what they're asking is what causes like the bloating and, and digestive issues. Well, it could be any number of things. You're not fasting long enough. It's something you're eating in there. Um, rather than take a remedy, I would just we follow out what, what we recommend to eat. Yeah. Okay, good. And then um, KL from YouTube asks, is there any way to cleanse the spleen? What you do is you take a siphon. Um, no, um, a strainer. You take a strainer. I knew that was coming. No, you basically, the, I think the best way to help the spleen is to fast, do fast, and do some periodic prolonged fasting, and uh, definitely regular intermittent fasting, um, and the spleen will have a chance to kind of uh, heal. Uh, the, the spleen really um, likes zinc. Um, also, um, you will kind of make it shrink if you're under a lot of stress. So we want to avoid stress, and also, um, sugar will really mess up the spleen. Um, so all those things will make it worse. All right, what do we have? Okay, my next favorite answer here. What is worse, um, yogurt or ice cream? So what did, did the YouTube, you didn't, you didn't play this game? Oh, there's some answers here. So s there's some of both um, ice cream and yogurt, I think the one that is more what is better did you say what is better or what is worse worse okay so then i guess i'm a little confused because some people are saying uh, you know ice cream because it's worse or ice cream because yeah. it's better so uh, but people said more ice cream in terms of being worse except for deb who said yogurt is definitely worse because ice cream is good for the soul uh, right, I don't so think anybody's going to disagree with that. So I'm going to release this video probably tomorrow or the next day, but there's some very interesting uh, stuff because if you look at the back of the label on yogurt, and I'm talking the regular yogurt that you would get at the grocery store. Okay, I'm not talking about some organic plain grass fed. I'm not talking about that. The regular, and they come in these smaller containers, mm -hmm. okay, uh, usually, and they're about four ounces or they're six ounces, okay? So they're measured by that. So if you look at It'll have a certain amount of sugar, but now if you compare that to ice cream, which is, they, they evaluate it based on a cup on the back of the label, eight ounces. And so if you do the comparison one for one, um, there's quite a few different yogurts that have almost twice as much sugar as ice cream. Ice cream per cup has 28 grams on average, and of course it could be a little bit more or less, but I, I'm going to do a video and you'll see four of the different types of yogurts that I presented have anywhere between 38 to 46 grams of sugar of comparable magnitude. Not only that, the type of sugar they're using is high fructose corn syrup, these MSG, modified food starch, food dyes. So, well, they could do that with ice cream too. But the point is that there's quite a uh, number of yogurts that have way more sugar than ice cream. So, if you think that so you send it's, your kid it's healthier to, with than yogurt you're, you're, to lunch. You're giving this child a healthy snack, whatever, or some food. You might want to reevaluate that. Right. Okay. And it's the vast majority of yogurt that's out there. Because I was saying, well, you know, what do I think of? I don't think of all of those yogurts. I think of plain, grass-fed. Vanilla. No flavor. No. <laughs> yogurt. Vanilla is, like, really sweet. But if you look in the 
refrigerator section at the grocery store, I mean, it's just a wall of yogurt. And it's kind of hard to just find that do you know plain. What, do you know what's interesting about that? I looked at all the uh, foods that had this dramatic spike between 1970 and present day. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you think, oh yeah, it's the sugar, the grains, the soy all went up. Yes, they went up by probably one to two to 300 percent. But yogurt went up by 1600 percent. I'm like, what? So back 1970, you didn't see the flavored yogurts that you see now. Mm -hmm. Now it's a health food. And a snack. Oh yeah. And a digestive, a digestive aid. Yes. It's marketed. Hey, listen, I, I bought into it. I used to take those things. I would take them to snacks. And I always wonder why I'm so hungry an hour later. I'm like, just starving. OK? OK. All right, so let's see. Uh, Francis, you're calling from Toronto. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello, so I'm 30 years old. Okay. For the past 10 years, I was feeling tired, brain fog, no restful sleep. So I did my oral glucose glucose intolerance test and I found out I have insulin resistance mm. and then meanwhile I did a saliva test the four point cortisol is actually very good mm. but my testosterone and the DHEA is high it's above the range so for the past six weeks during keto I have to say I feel much much better mm. like I don't feel sleepy after the meal and my brain fog is better but I always like wake up during like three o'clock in the middle of the night, even mm. before the keto. Before the keto, when I wake up, I snack. I have no problem to sleep again. So during the keto, I, so I don't snack. So I wake up like from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. like every day. Mm -hmm. So I just don't know like how to deal with it. Is it due to the cortisol, due to the insulin, or due to the glycogen? So yeah, well, I, I try many things. Like, yeah, yeah, good, good like question. Like magnesium, yeah, yeah. Um, so what you could do is you can get a blood glucose test, which you pro probably already have, and measure your glucose in the early morning, um, right when you get up. Uh, if it's high, then we know, okay, so, so you're not out of the woods yet. It's still an insulin resistance issue. And what happens with insulin resistance, because you had it, um, and it takes a while to get that corrected over time by doing what you're doing, you may find that your liver still is making a little too much um, glucose at night. Um, called gluconeogenesis. And what happens with that, there's these counter hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, that kick in there in the middle of the night to try to stabilize the blood sugar. Because what happens, the blood sugar gets released or produced, and then insulin pushes it down. And then these counter regulatory hormones kick in to wake you up. So when you check your cortisol levels, you may not, uh, it might not show up because it only spikes in the middle of the night. So you have to really check it four times a day, which maybe you did or I don't know. So that it could be, there, be that, in which case you just have to give it more time and maybe take some magnesium before bed. Um, and there's a, berberine is a really good um, herb for insulin resistance. I mean, I just, that's just like hands down one of the, the best ones. Um, vitamin D. DHA, very, very important. Um, you just need to focus on kind of like getting the insulin resistance improved and tweaked to the point where things uh, balance out. But I think that's what you need to work, work on at this point, and um, I think you're, you're going to be good to go. So, so let me know what happens, Francis. All right, Karen, <laughs> what are you laughing about over here? I love these guys. They're just cracking me up today. Laura, Beef Wellington is not keto. <laughs> if you take the meat out of the puff pastry and away from the flour cream part and you just extract a clean mushroom and the meat, then yes, it is keto. I wish it was keto. I love beef Wellington. Okay, and then uh, Linda also on uh, YouTube is asking for keto ice cream recipe. There's a lot of recipes out there, and I'll tell you my opinion. We talked about this before. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing in making a keto ice cream is the ice cream maker. Because we, how many in our life have we owned ice cream makers? More than one. <laughs> like a lot. Everyone on the market we've tried. Uh, 
So there are some good ones. Um, I don't have one in particular, but maybe we'll do one recipe sometime. Yes. But I recommend if you like ice cream, get a really, really, really good ice cream maker and have one for the rest of your life instead of buying 40 cheap ones like we did. Exactly. Like a good vacuum. Okay, good. So um, Dave on Facebook, he says, I'm a little confused with taking the MCT oil. Okay. Am I right? that if you're in ketosis, you wouldn't want to take that oil anymore so you can burn your, eat your own mm -hmm. fat. Uh, so the oil, is it only good for you at the start? Okay, so there's a couple indications of when you take MCT oil. One is in the start where you're transitioning to make it easier. Uh, number two, if you have uh, dementia or Alzheimer's and you want to really beef up, no pun intended, that M those ketones in the brain. If you have ketones in the brain from the MCT oil, your body will pick those first in place of glucose. So you'll actually drive these ketones in the brain. So any type of cognitive benefits you want, you know, um, MCT oil is good to, to take. The other thing is that some people take it before they work out to get a little boost, get more energy. Some people also take it to prevent losing too much weight, like myself. So you, there's different indications of when you want to take it. But if you're still trying to lose weight, try to avoid it because um, it'll slow down. To some degree, it will slow down your ability to use your own fat. But on the other hand, it does. there's some conflicting stuff that says that it can increase your metabolism. Just try and see what happens. And yeah. there you go. Okay, so the f another question, quiz. Okay. All right. Ready. All right. How do you know if you're kid is eating too much sugar. What's the number one symptom, mm. the most common number one symptom that that child is going to express if they're eating too much sugar? That's a great question. Okay. Yeah. So as you're chewing on that one, uh, let's go to Gary. Are you there, Gary, from New Jersey? I am here. Great. I feel like I hit the lottery getting through to you today. This uh, is great. Um, I am 72 years old. I am doing healthy keto for the last 13 months. I eat two meals a day, 12 o'clock and 5 o'clock. I'm done dinner by 5.30. I exercise daily. Um, I was going to the gym um, doing elliptical and cardio for about an hour, hour and a half, but since they closed the gym, now I walk about an hour, hour and a half every day. And in the last year I've lost 45 pounds I've gone from 190 to 145 Wow okay wow. pretty good <laughs> here's great. my problem um, when I started keto after three months I did my blood work and my a1c went from 5.9 to 5.4 and my fasting glucose went from 105 to 90, and I was absolutely thrilled. The doctor was very happy. And I just did blood work again last week, and that was after nine months of doing really healthy keto. Been perfect um, following the program, and I expected to see my A1C. To be honest, I expected to see it about five. Uh, it went back to 5.9, <laughs> and my fasting glucose went to 110, okay. and I'm just fl blown away. Okay. I called the doc, and I said, I don't understand, and he said to me, uh, just keep up the exercise, keep doing what you're doing with low carb, and he said it could be in your genes, which I thought was ridiculous. Right. So, okay. plus, I'm at a loss. Okay. So, so aggravated I, with this. After 13 months, I, right. I, I thought I would be... I have numbers that would just blow away everything. So I have a question for you. Um, sure. I want you to realize that A1C is an average of about three months of blood sugars, okay? So yes. within those three months, is it possible that you went off a few times and didn't quite do strict no. keto? No, I've been okay. so strict. Okay. Um, um, Watching my carbs, I don't go more than 25 net carbs a day. Okay. Um, pretty much got rid of all the vegetables. I, when I say vegetables, I was only eating uh, broccoli and Brussels sprouts and cabbage. Did away with all that. Now it's just sauerkraut. Okay, good. Um, 
Okay, so, so obviously this is very strange for you because you're not eating any sugar. Why the heck is your sugar somewhat high, right? That it's illogical, right? Mm -hmm. So it can't be coming from the diet. It cannot be coming from the diet. And I'm going to put you on silent so I can just kind of explain what the mechanism is. There's this, it has to be only one thing. It's like you're, there's certain parts of your body that need some glucose and, it's, and your body makes makes glucose uh, from, it's called gluconeogenesis, it makes it from uh, several things. It makes it from uh, protein, it can make it from um, your diet, which it's not coming from that. It can make it from fatty acids, it can make it from ketones. That's right, your body can turn ketones into glucose if it needs it. So this tells me that there, there potentially could be a little bit of a has to be some insulin resistance still going on, or maybe possibly, I don't know, s a little bit of fat in the liver, probably not, but I don't know. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about it because you're not, you're, especially with the A1C, I mean, still, you're still within, well within the normal ranges. I mean, even the American Diabetes Association says that, oh, if you're below seven, like, I think that's crazy. But if you're below six, I mean, you're, mid five, so I think you're, you're still doing fine, but your body is making it for some reason, um, and I think it, the only possible reason would be that you're, um, it has to be uh, a bit of insulin resistance, which by the way could take several years to really get that squeaky clean. So what I would do is I would focus, shift your gears on uh, things that will help insulin resistance, maybe berberine, and start and start really working in like milk, milk thistle with the liver, and then reevaluate it and see if uh, it comes back to normal. All right, Gary, good question. I don't think you're, I don't think it's that bad, but it's something of concern that we can keep improving. So let us know in, in a little bit. Come back to us and um, and let us know how you're doing. All right, what is that uh, that number one symptom that your children will express if they're eating too much sugar? The number one answer was uh, hyper agitated hyper. The number two answer was acne, which, okay. And the number three answer is fatigue. Okay. Well, the number one answer was correct. It's related to your mood. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's several description des describers. Like you could have, it's like, um, Irritated, grouchy, yeah. unruly, defiant, um, angry, moody. Um, like the, there's a disconnect between the brain and the body. They can't control their body, so they're just out of a bit out of control. So I mean, that's probably not real to any of you uh, parents out there with your kids doing that. But that is the one thing that indicates blood sugar issues, and uh, they need to start cutting back the sugar to, you know, if they're doing 31 teaspoons, bring it down to maybe like 29. He's joking. Yes. This is where I come in. The second, He's joking. The second sign that is the, um, is the lack of attention, as in attention deficit. So you, you become the deficit of and your attention. Lack of focus. People did say that. Yes. I mean, how many kids have those symptoms? I mean, ideally. How many adults have those symptoms? <laughs> Ideally, a child should be a bit, a lot of energy, but be able to control their bodies and be calm, you know, focused, ideally. Interested. Not like, bang, bouncing off the walls. Right, right. Well, we've seen it. We've seen a child go from very calm and focused and then eating a bunch of sugar. We've and seen it. bouncing off the walls. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. there you go. Yep. Okay. Okay. Hey, Ray, you're... You're in New York City. Had a question. Go ahead. Oh, this is fantastic. I, first of all, I love you guys. Just oh, let me thanks. just put that out there. I love you guys. But I had a quick question. I had a question. Um, actually, it's like, it's like two questions. Okay, so the question really is for, is, is, is for kind of Karen here. Okay. Um, okay, I saw one of, your, uh, one of your videos to, like, um, wash nuts before you eat them. Um, and I've been kind of, I tried to do that with Brazil nuts, mm -hmm. but, uh, they came out kind of like, I washed them 
and then kind of like let them dry, but then they kept holding on to moisture, so they got moldy, and I, you're really only supposed to have like two Brazil nuts a day, mm. so I can't eat like a whole pack of Brazil nuts in like a day, so I want to know, is there a way to get around like uh, washing the nuts? Well, I think um, what you're referring to isn't as much washing as it is soaking, and then Soaking, yes. and then drying in an oven or in a dehydrator, and that is what pulls all the moisture out. So if you if you soak the nuts overnight, I've never tried Brazil nuts, and I do like a, a nice salty Brazil nut. I I just really like that. So I know two a day is a lot of discipline, but um, it's soaking it overnight, rinsing it off, and then uh, putting it in an oven, maybe two hundred. Uh, for a long time or in a food dehydrator and it might be for you know six or seven or eight hours until they're really light and crispy and not moist at all as a matter of fact I, I don't know about Brazil nuts but uh, other nuts if you soak them and you don't dry them they'll sprout mm. so I don't know oh, okay if if you've seen that with a Brazil nut I never tried it but it's the drying that is the key it's a dry. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I did because I know the fire taste. Is, if it, is, is it as high in Brazil nuts as it is in almonds, or I'm no. not sure. No, it's not. You know, no, uh, the fire tastes. Um, um, yeah. And and then there's a quick, 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 quick question for you, Dr. Berg. I went down to Omad and I ate a steak, and then I all of a sudden now feel like a pain in the left side of my uh, stomach. Mm -hmm. So I tried. I've been eating. Have been taking betaine hydrochloric acid mm -hmm. and, ox and ox uh, bile salt mm -hmm. and it's feeling a little bit better but it tends to come back every once in a while I'm not sure wh why that is um, yeah. th uh, is it serious or no, sure. you, just ha you just have to it takes a bit to really build up your stomach acids it's very common not to have enough stomach acids so you just have to do smaller amounts of meat uh, and actually increase the betaine for a longer period of time and then your stomach will build up to it um, but um, a lot of times people think, oh yeah, I'm just going to put some uh, betaine in there, you know, maybe a couple weeks. But it takes, it could take months to really build that up uh, until you can digest that. But it's just an indication that you might, um, you need maybe some zinc or more sea salt to help you make hydrochloric acid. All right, thanks, Ray. I think too that the nuts so big that um, it takes longer to dehydrate. I'm sure you're, it's you're dealing take with a, lot a to dry out. very large. No. And I see that there's a few people here who did see the video on soaking and drying the nuts. Yes. And I appreciate it. And I hope you are all home soaking your nuts. Okay. Okay, good. So um, here's one. Uh, someone on YouTube says when they eat a lot of uh, protein or concentrated protein, they get spots on their face. It sounds like an allergic reaction to me, but... So, like aging spots or like red spots like an allergy histamine Un uh, that was all the data okay so i don't like a reaction I, uh. I don't have enough information to to answer that sorry okay yeah do you have another question okay well if you uh could, be, sure. could be an allergy it could be an allergy could be an allergy Okay, so here is one uh, my son has possible ibd or possible colitis just does know what to eat. So digestive issues, not that you're treating this. Say you have uh, a rough time eating, what do you recommend? Yeah, it's, um, there's inflammation there. So the, the number one thing, you need to watch my video on the omega-6 fatty acids. You, usually the child is, or anyone's doing too much omega-6 and not enough omega-3. I need to get that out of the diet because it's in, oh my gosh, it's in chicken wings, it's in chicken, uh, what do you call those, um, nuggets, tons of that, any type of, you know, like oils, and it's really inflammatory. So the best thing is get back, get on my keto thing, exactly how I talk about it, but also add in there some, some wheatgrass juice powder for the chlorophyll, and a, a good... Uh, green for your salad would be cabbage. I've been doing a lot of cabbage lately. Cabbage has unique factors to help reduce inflammation in your colon. Um, so that's pretty much out of what I would do. And I have another question. Yes. Okay. Why does keto 
eliminate excess fluid from your body. Sometimes like 8 to 10 pounds or 13 pounds. Why does keto do that? That's a good question. Now let's go to S uh, Samina from Fairfax, Virginia, right down the street. Are you there? Yes. Thank you so much for taking my call and thank you so much for what you're doing for us. Quick question. I just, um, I took cortisol um, and nutritional yeast. I have a whole line of your things. I stopped because it makes me nauseous. But adrenal and cortisol support totally worked for me. Like in a day, I was very, very anxious and I just had no control over anything. I took it and it, it did calm, calm me down. Mm -hmm. um, but somehow I was very nauseous when I took it. It, it does go off uh, mm -hmm. during the day, but as I took it, I was just very, very nauseous. And yes, I'm not on keto or anything. I'm just struggling to get on the boat. <laughs> okay. So this is a, if you, any nauseousness is an indication of um, gallbladder related to digestion, but definitely gallbladder and a lack of bile. I think a really good remedy for you would be the gallbladder formula because that has the uh, purified bile salts to help you just with digestion as you get on the keto plan, which is gonna ultimately going to solve a lot of your problems. So um, that's what I would recommend. And in, in the meantime, just take a smaller amount of the yeast, just a little bit, and then until your system is used to it. All right, good, good question. All right, I think we're ready for uh, the answers to the, the answer. last question. Yes. Uh, Carbs hold a lot of water. You are correct. <laughs> okay, so one gram of stored sugar, it's called glycogen, um, holds three to four grams of fluid. So think about it. You have all this stored sugar in your muscles and your liver, and your whole, you're like, basically it's a sponge, it's a water, you're waterlogged. And so you do keto, and you deplete all, at least you deplete, deplete all the glucose in your liver, just get rid of that stuff, and then you do fasting as well, and you, you still have it in your muscles to some degree, but you just, with that, dumps a lot of water. Uh, this is why it's important to take electrolytes um, when you're doing keto, because, or even sea salt, because you lose some of those electrolytes, and then you'll feel even better. But yeah, that's why, because keto doesn't retain fluid, carbs do. There you go. <laughs> Smart people. All right. So you have a question? Oh, if not, still answering. I have Go ahead. Okay. Luann from Ontario. Are you there? Yes. Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe I'm talking to you. Um, I have. I started keto last year, and I was successful, and then. I, you know, you just keep hearing people talk and I got really confused and then I started watching your videos and I actually bought a magazine, um, I think it's called First Look and you were, you were like the feature story about losing 12 pounds a week um, and I, I think if that, I hope it was you and you said that you, um, uh, I, I guess added, added some fruit was that you? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, um, I know what you're talking about, but that wasn't my comments. And I'm just going to tell you right now. Someone um, altered. That was woman's world, altered, right? Yeah, someone altered the information, and so I They're won't be. Off. I won't be doing any more articles. Twelve in those magazines <laughs> every yeah. week. It's like cut your left yeah. arm off, now and then the next week said. cut your right leg off. Yeah, you can lose Guaranteed twelve pounds a week. To lose 12 pounds a, a week, <laughs> week upon week, so. Yeah, um, but it did, it did say, you know, it just said that you had done some more research or something and realized that we could eat more fruit and, um, you know, yeah. and so then I, then I thought, well, I'm just going to, I've never seen a video and I started watching your videos and then one video said, um, like, if you do really strict keto, you didn't say how much you would lose, so. I'm just confused as to right. where to start. And I know okay. you have some start videos. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, does that affect your sleep? Or 
I've just been really stressed lately with a million things going on, and okay. I know you have sleep videos I can watch too, yeah. right? Yeah, so this is what you do. Very, very simple. You just go right to drberg.com and you click the blog button. And what I have on there, the first thing that's going to jump right out is watch this first. And then let's say the second video after that, the third, that's the way you do it. Get the, you need the basics on exactly how to do this. You're going to find out that the most you could possibly lose per week is two pounds. You're, and that's not for a really healthy person. Um, you can't, I mean, m the water will come off mm -hmm. and that'll be a lot initially, but then you're going to, it's going to come down. Um, I have a lot of videos on sleep and stress. You should watch those as well. But here's the most important thing. You need to, Luann, focus on implementing these, this basic keto plan first. Because what will happen is chances are these other issues are going to kind of get a lot better real fast. So um, the proof's in the pudding. Maybe I shouldn't talk about pudding. The keto pudding. Yeah. The proof's in the keto pudding. So go ahead and do it. And let us know your success. But yeah, and we, we don't, definitely don't get go in, in, in any information on some uh, third party magazine right. because yeah, they, that's false They can add anything and edit anything in there. They'll take my stuff and like use twist his it. name to but my, sell a lot of magazines. My video is pretty, the videos are pretty accurate. Right. And okay. I would also remind people that at least in my case and I think many other ones that if it was just a matter of losing weight, that would not be enough for me. The fact that I feel so much better in all the ways that you describe, even at 66 years old, I feel like a little kid if I shove down some sugar and do it. I feel terrible. And you know what's great, Steve? You you act like a little kid, too. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I, think, I think the more you just keto, the he's, more he acts like a little kid. He's Steve, so if playful. you could also put the link for the summit coming up at the end of this month, 29th and 30th, because if you don't know about the summit, the summit is the best way to learn about keto, right? Because you have we're we're bringing in speakers from all over the place, and they're going to speak in our virtual summit. Mm -hmm. And you guys are in for a treat. If I mean, most of you have great success with keto. So if you had success with keto, you should strengthen that successful action by learning more about it and different angles, different techniques. That's what you're going to learn, and it's very affordable. It's v you can actually. You can save on flights and airline tickets. Parking. Actually, it's free. Right. Free airline tickets. No line at the bathroom. Because it's all virtual. Right. And I think last year there were, what, eight speakers? And then this year there were planned 10 speakers, and now there's 12 speakers. Mm -hmm. or, and then these guys are from all over the world. It's going to be incredibly cool. All different kinds of doctors and specialties. And I mean, I don't doubt. If you have attention on anything, it's going to be taken up during this. Yeah. This summit. It's really cool. Okay, and for the benefit of those folks, Dr. Berg, what is that link? I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed. DrBerg.com slash something or summit? What you can do is I have links on the YouTube channel. I have links on the um, on my website. I would just... Um, Go to DrBerg.com. Yeah, and, and, and the cart and the shopping cart, shopping and it'll cart. be right at the top. I think it's, pretty, it's right on the top of the website, too. If I'm not mistaken. I just have to double check. Okay, and the other thing is that... Are you still gifting that immune course for free? S yes. And okay. Steve, <laughs> Every time I ask, he pauses. Yeah, because um, there's an immune course, 21 lessons. We have over 13,000 people that have taken the course so far. And uh, it's, 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 this course is not about selling my products. It's about getting you to have the knowledge of the immune system so you could be fully um, you know, confident in what to do to support your own immune system. And that way, y you're not like freaking out or f in fear. It's like, it's, and it's going to, I think you'll love the course and it's going to change your viewpoint on a lot of things. So take the free course while you, now, while you can bef before I uh, change the pricing on it. I can hear you, Steve. Uh, did you want to say something else? Oh, we're, we're still hot back here. I got yeah. the mic on. I'm so sorry. No, no, I'm all done. Okay, good. And we've got all the links up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so enjoy. Okay, okay, good. And then the thing that I thought was absolutely incredible is that you told me that 2,000 people a day, yeah. 2,000 people a day from all over the world enroll in this immune course, which I love because I love how interested everyone is in really getting the knowledge so that they can 
because over their own body, especially in this time where, you know, there's so much m information and crossing information and, you know. And I just don't want anyone to be upset if you go there next week and find out it's $95 and I said it was free. So it's limited time. Take That's do why I you, know, do you know why week. I'm doing that? Because if I give it away for free forever, like people procrastinate, they don't, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested, do it. If do you're not it, interested, enroll now because if you're not interested, enroll next week and pay <laughs> the 90. Okay, let's go to um, Rusafi from Rusafi? Bangladesh. Are you there? Yeah. Hi. I'm here. Can you Hi. hear me? Yes, perfectly. Hi, Dr. Burke. Hi. Great. Uh, talking to you. Uh, I really admire what you are doing. Uh, I, I uh, regularly follow your videos and uh, your website, everything. So, really love you. <laughs> right. So, actually, uh, I, I've done, uh, I'm doing keto for last six months almost and uh, already cut down uh, around 30 kilo uh, of my weight. Wow. Uh, and I'm still five or six kgs left okay. uh, in my last last five, six kgs. But uh, during my last couple of uh, kgs, I'm kind of facing uh, hemorrhoids problem uh, mm -hmm. lately. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, one or two times a week sometimes. So uh, wondering if somehow hemorrhoids is uh, related to keto or uh, it's, it's uh, uh, just for your background that it's al also in my genetic line. My father uh, have it kind, kind of and also I have uh, got my gallbladder removed uh, 10 years back. So just my question is, uh, is hemorrhoids uh, related to keto somehow or yes. how, how can I, I actually get explain. benefited? Let me explain or what's going on, okay? Yeah. Are you sitting down? Yeah, sure. Are you ready to? Okay. <laughs> so um, here's, here's what happens. When you do keto, you actually do more fats, okay? More fatty foods. You do less carb. You had your gallbladder out. So one of the best remedies for hemorrhoids is uh, purified bile salts. So it's interesting that you, you mentioned that, but purified bile salts is the remedy you, and it's gonna help you digest more fat because without a gallbladder, you're gonna have a, a more difficult time digesting the fats and you're gonna need more bile so you'll be more deficient and then you'll have, you could have some symptoms. So that is what you need to resolve this situation. So get some purified bile salts, take maybe one tablet in the morning on empty stomach, take one after the, a meal, take one in the evening. You just need like three tablets a day, okay? Good question. All right, do, do I, can I ask one more question? You have one, oh, you mean quiz? Yeah, Quick? one last one. All right. Quickly. Now, this was an actual question from someone on YouTube and I just wanted to ask everyone out there. Okay. Is applesauce a good healthy substitute for candy for my child? Mm. Okay. So answer that and I just need to go to Shanili, Shanila yeah. from Pakistan. Hi. Oh. Hi, how are you? Great. Okay, so last year I started doing my keto and intermittent fasting and I lost my weight, I was active, everything was good. But six months ago something happened, I went into depression, started eating, ate everything possible on the face of this earth, mm -hmm. gained 10 kg. And I'm unable to go back to intermittent fasting or keto because my cravings are really bad. If I start doing anything, my sugar levels drop, my blood pressures drop. So I don't know what to do. Okay. My sleep is messed up. Okay, I know, yeah. I, I know what you need to do. There's two things, you know, the problem is like, it's, it's hard to do intermittent fasting because you're gonna, your blood sugar will drop, you're gonna be hungry. And it's hard to do keto because you're not fasting long enough and your blood sugars are going up. So the only thing you can do at this point is increase your fat. The fat is gonna be sustaining so you can do enough intermittent fasting 
So your blood sugars would be more stabilized because you're more satisfied and you have fuel from the diet. So this is a perfect opportunity for to do MCT oil or just make those fat bombs that are sweet. So you're eating things that are like little substitutes for the actual sugar and you'll fast longer because you ate more fat and then you could start to fast and then you can get back on track. So add more fat to the diet and uh, it'll help you make the transition. Okay, what do we have as the answer? Is that a good substitute? What do you think? Uh, mostly people are saying it's not a good substitute. Someone's saying if it's unsweetened, it's an okay substitute or better. But most people are saying no. Okay, so what's interesting about applesauce is they, they, usually, they usually sweeten it, but even if they don't, there's actually more sugar in that product than there is candy. I mean, it's like, it's just, it's like candy, because they take this apple and they basically cook it, it's heated, so you break it down into this super glucose thing. So um, candy is normally not made from glucose. It's made from high fructose corn syrup and things like that, which is 50% fructose and maybe 50% glucose. So that will, um, that's a little lower on the glycemic index, but when you're dealing with apples, it's like almost like pure fru fructose. So applesauce would be worse than candy. <laughs> It's not a health food. Right. And I want to point out, with the candy and applesauce, as well as the yogurt, the sugar yogurt, and the ice cream, neither of these examples should leave you with the idea that you should or can eat ice cream and candy. <laughs> these were questions, you know, just in comparing these two things, points of interest. Well, I'm glad that you clarified that for Steve. <laughs> I because was going to go home and start Steve popping Steve was the candy. Uh, ready to have some ice cream. I and was. Some Doctor candy. recommended is the way I figured. That's it, right. So. <laughs> Doctor Berg yeah, said. Oh, God, Doctor Berg funny. said it was okay. Well, on that note. Now wait. A lot of people are asking uh -oh. where is the link for the free immune course. Just shot it up. There we go. Okay. It's, uh, so Dr. if you guys are watching, you. Gift. Did you put it on Facebook too? Uh, let's see. Yes, it's going out on both the uh, okay. uh, at, on the video itself. So okay. okay. Go so get you guys them, folks. Go get them. Should be able to see it. If not, go to drberg.com. It's d r b e r g dot com. There's no dot after the first doctor. Oh, slash you know what? Gift. You know, I just remembered. Oh, I remember the link okay. for the immune course. It's drberg.com forward slash gift. And that's what they're seeing right now. So it's okay, terrific. good. Okay, there so you go. Okay, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.